what's up and welcome i am matthew the hybrid the designer and developer thank you so much for clicking this video this is a series of graphql videos centered around burning the concept of graphql into your brain instead of getting into being technical and follow me kind of a style do this do that i've decided to step back and try to understand why it was difficult for me to understand the concept of graphql and i realized that i have been watching a lot of tutorials where i was learning the syntax but i was not equipped to answer interview questions questions like what graphql is trying to solve and what techniques is it using to do that what technologies are affected? What is it trying to replace? How efficient is GraphQL? So I couldn't be able to answer those questions. So I created this series. If you are new here, please check other videos. Now, the techniques that are used in GraphQL. Obviously, I don't know the actual, actual um, technical code, but I am hoping to give you the concept okay so let's just quickly um talk about um the the history of um getting data from the database so that we can contrast it to the techniques that are being used okay so here we are going to be very swift we are not going to explain a lot of things let's say we've got two tables table number one for users and table number two for employees we've got an app here that wants to get the information from this database okay this is a database from this database however it cannot do that without obviously an api application programming interface okay this api exposes endpoints okay where if you hit this endpoint you can get a list of users if you hit this endpoint you can get a list of employees okay as you can see this is what is going on here obviously the challenge will be if you get into this users it gives you a list of users whereas maybe you only wanted a certain field there okay which is with graphql it's that simple okay and also graphql doesn't have multiple endpoints it only has got one endpoint okay now how is graphql achieving all of this okay so this is your database Okay, this technique, I'm hoping it's going to help you when you are watching a technical video on YouTube where they are coding so that you can start to feel like you understand the terms and you know why they are doing what they are doing. Because in most cases, obviously, they won't explain in details because the video is about coding anyway. Okay, you've got your DB sitting here. Okay. Now, instead of API as a middleman, we've got GraphQL as a middleman. Okay, we've got GraphQL as a middleman. Okay, let me just write this. And then we've got the application here. Okay. And then we've got the application. Okay. So, what's the technique that GraphQL is using in order to do? whatever that it wants to do point number one it is not database specific okay meaning that here you can use um any database in this section okay you can use any database you can use an an sql okay based database and you can use a no sql database meaning that any database here you can use as you are starting to see that oh graphql it's not the database okay but it's a query language okay so meaning that it is not a database my apologies about that i don't know what's that black screen thing okay so it's not a database meaning that in this section you can um you can some sort of add any database it can work okay and then now um the technique that graphql is using number one graphql wants to know more information okay it's like graphql wants to make some informed decision graphql wants to help you okay graphql it's like um a psychologist okay um or what can i say um uh, a psychiatrist okay somebody will ask you more question in order to understand 
the core and the essence of your own problem so that they can meet you halfway okay so the more you reveal to them the better for them to help you or it becomes easier for them to help you graphql is doing that that's the approach it asks you more about your information remember graphql doesn't want to know your database it doesn't want to know okay it's not interested in it it's not interested in it okay and also um what it wants to know because here you can use a lot of databases okay what it wants to know when in, when i'm talking about the, the more info it wants to know the structure okay it wants to know the structure of your database okay it's like um an engine okay the engine of a car um has got some certain things which can be found in a different engine okay in a different car in a different model but an engine in an engine okay so meaning that all the engine conforms to a certain structure okay or, or certain architecture or certain way of the building blocks are the same okay things might be different but the building blocks are the same okay so graphql is just looking for that architecture from which your engine is being built okay let's put things into some sort of into practicality in your database you've got tables or collections okay let me put a user or users okay inside users we've got a user id and also for simplicity let's say a user name okay this is a collection okay in this id you are expecting numbers and the name you want the name to be a string okay so this is the structure of your database okay so graphql wants to know the structure let's just ask um, a general question why graphql wants to know this structure okay graphql is going to act on your behalf okay making things super simple for you okay so it needs to know the structure of a database not the database itself it needs to know how is the data structured okay let's say graphql receive a query for only getting a user id okay meaning that graphql needs to know that there is a user id here okay imagine if graphql is looking for um an id number which is not here that's a problem so meaning that you need some sort of um create uh, a mirror image of what is in here not in terms of the actual data and numbers but in terms of the structure so that graphql can also have the same copy somewhere in here so that graphql can have the same copy so everything that is here it's also something that is here so by telling us or giving it the the essence of what it is you are just making it easier for you to help you it's like a psychiatrist somebody who's asking you more about your behavior so that they can meet you halfway so if you don't tell them more about yourself so it means that they won't tell you much obviously most drug addicts and people who are addicted when they are being asked by a psychiatrist about a lot of things usually they don't give more information as a result they cannot be helped so graphql is asking this structure so that it can be confident and know true and true that when it's making the queries okay the information will always be there okay i hope you you get that one so continuing now that graphql knows your structure okay which this one ticks it knows um your structure also it wants to facilitate the communication between graphql and your user interface okay meaning that you've got the user interface here okay now the user interface might ask for okay let's say it might ask for an id number which doesn't exist in the database okay 
Now, since GraphQL is aware of the structure, then GraphQL obviously will know that we have a problem here. The UI is asking for an ID number, which we don't have it on the actual database, which is it's important because now GraphQL is acting as some sort of a facilitator here okay because GraphQL wants to make things easier for you okay now let's bring this knowledge okay into more of a practical and um, terminology that you might hear on other videos okay so this structure we've been talking about a structure a lot this structure is referred to as a schema okay you will see um, this word a lot, uh, more especially when you are using MongoDB, okay? MongoDB, you will have to also to define a schema, okay? So a schema, it's like um, your field names and their corresponding data types, okay? We've got a schema. So now we have um, reached the first um, technique or the first uh, way in which GraphQL um, functions, okay? Number one, it wants more information from you, particularly it wants the schema. So it's like it's having a mirrored copy of your database, not the actual content, but the structure, okay? So after that, GraphQL will have to make changes. GraphQL will have to update the database. GraphQL will have to act on your behalf to make things simpler for you. So meaning that what it does, it also asks you not only the structure now, okay, but number two, it asks you um, the functions, okay, the functions that are associated with this structure, okay. For instance, we've got users, okay. We can, when we're querying the information from the database, we might get a user by ID whereby I can say, give me a lot of information about ID number one, okay? Then I will get all the information, okay? So there are functions associated with this schema, okay? So meaning that if you are just defining things for me, you are not really doing something in terms of action, okay? Because defining is like to say, um, Matthew is a programmer, okay? That means you are not, there is no function, okay? There is not, pro, there's no process going on, okay? But if I'm saying I am going to call Matthew for you, it means that there is some sort of a function going on. I am going to do something. So after you've got your schema, you need to have a list of functions, okay, that will assist the schema, okay, or that will get the information, according to the schema, I think that's the right way, okay? So this function will organize information for you according to the schema. So those function might be obviously this one, okay? Get user, okay, get user by ID or get all users, okay? So in this function, okay, we are going to, uh, in, in this function part, let's say you are going to have um, get user by ID, uh, my apologies for my bad writing and also get all users okay and also get all users okay these um just a moment just a moment just a moment okay let's come here on 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 this schema okay let's give this schema a name okay because i think um schema might not really be the name that is used in um in graphql i think the actual name it's a uh, type definition okay type devs okay this is a short form for it okay type def so these are type definition the structure and the types of your own data and then after that we've got these functions which are responsible for executing for getting the actual data for you and the actual name that is being used these are then called resolvers okay so these are called um resolvers okay so we have some sort of um, landed into two of 
the most important uh, terms in GraphQL, which is type definitions and resolvers. Okay, now let's um, formulate some sort of a relationship between the type definitions and resolvers. I think I'm going to need a new page here. Okay, so now we've got type defs. Okay. We've got type definition. Okay, so now if you are watching any other YouTube tutorial and you hear them talking about type defs, now at least you know what type definitions are. And also when you are when they are talking about the resolvers, you know what resolvers are. Okay. So the type definition, let's continue with the, the users. Okay. Okay, we've got users. And then we've got an ID, which is a number. And we've got a name, which is a string. Okay, the name is a string. Okay, this is a type definition. Okay. And then in resolvers, okay, because um, we need to have functions, okay, that are associated with the type definition. Okay, for instance, we might have, um, let's say, get users and get user by ID. Remember, here we are just banning concept. Okay, that means you have to supply the actual ID. Okay, so here we are just uh, banning the concept. Okay, so as you can see, there is a relationship between between the type definitions and the resolvers because the resolvers are functions that um, get the data according to the type definition. For instance, you can not have on resolvers um, get employees, whereas on type definition, you don't have the employees. As you can see, that's um, some sort of an inconsistency there. Okay, so it means that as we have get users in defining this, okay, for instance, let's say, when this function is getting the users, what type is it expecting to receive? It's expecting to receive a type of user, okay? A structure of user. So in GraphQL, you will also need to mention that even though maybe the syntax might not be the same, but you are telling GraphQL that this get user will receive an information which is structured in this way in this type definition. So do you see the relationship between the definition and the resolver, okay? And also um, in get by ID, okay, you will need to tell it that, okay, um, the actual data that it's going to, to get, for instance here, okay, it's getting the users, okay? But since it's going to be a list of users here, we might say this is the best way to to put this, the type is going to be a user because it's in, in this form, but remember it's going to be an array, meaning that when it's going to be an array, it's going to be user one, comma, user two, all those things will come in form of an array. Obviously we will label that data, okay? So now here, when we get a user by ID, we are going to get the actual user, okay? Not an array, but we are going to get only one user. This is the relationship between type definitions and resolvers, and you must keep it this way. As soon as you, some sort of you treat resolvers as different things and type definition as different things, then it's not going to be easier for you to understand uh, GraphQL. I'm Matthew the Hybrid, the designer and developer. If you feel like this video is adding value into your own overall understanding of GraphQL, please do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. See you on the next one.